Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how I modified a transit mounted trolling motor with a wireless ESC used to control both the throttle and a steering gearbox. That being said, let's go ahead and get started. These are the major electronics I'm going to be using in this project. First is the Hobby Wing Quick Run 880 brushed ESC and the other is the Hot RC DS600 wireless joystick controller with the receiver. This is the unboxed ESC and since it's used to control two motors the two positive connections for the motors are the yellow wires and the two negatives are the blue wires and then you have your negative and positive that power the ESC from your battery. Here is your connection for the receiver and then this is a little on off switch and in here you probably can't see this is where your connection goes for your programming and where you plug in a fan if you want to use it. So I'm going to replace this tiny little on off switch with this one here and it's rated for water environments so it would be much better and then what I'm going to do here since you have two sets of these connections for the motors I'm going to double them up to help with the current flow through them and in order to do that I made these Y connectors so these are going to go from in this case the two positives since they have bullet connectors already stock included on them this is going to go to this Y connector I made with 14 gauge wire and then it's going to go down here to this connector which is going to be used to connect to here and it's going to be the 10 gauge wire from my power source This is the Hot RC DS600 wireless controller. It's joystick operated and the receiver to the left has six channels. Channel one is going to be for the gearbox motor and channel two is going to be for the trolling motor. And I'm not going to go over all the functions because you're not going to need them for this project. You're going to need two sets of these three-quarter inch galvanized split ring tubing hangers because those are going to function as your collar and gear splines on the shaft for the trolling motor and those are the ones that engage the gear teeth on the gearbox motor, if all that makes sense. So anyways, you're going to take these two top pieces away which have been used before in the past for foot pedal steering on a trolling motor shaft and you're just going to use these two ends because you're going to put them like this back to back now this is a piece of one and one eighth inch diameter trolling motor shaft so this is what you want to do you want to put them on either side because that's going to clamp it but you can see there's a gap now you could tap them and they would fit. If you just tap down on the top here with a hammer, it would expand them. But then this gap in here would get wide and then it won't fit in the gear teeth. So what you need to do is right here on all four of these, you need to grind down this little corner section. And I just used a file and filed it until it fit flush on the trolling motor shaft. I wanted to mention something about the gearbox motor here. Now you can see it has slots in here and that's because there's a cooling fan inside because when it's used with the ride-on toy it generates a lot of heat. Now because it's going to be used just to momentarily turn the shaft of a trolling motor I don't anticipate it getting very hot but I would be concerned if water splashed inside these slots. Now of course I don't recommend this for salt water at all. So what I came up to do is use this fiberglass repair tape which I've used in the past to make vented PWM boxes 
and I'm just going to wrap it around the outside here which will keep the splashing of the water out but still allow for air to circulate in there and keep the motor cool. This is the motorized gearbox as you can see here and the shaft needs to go through this hole here so what you're going to need to do is open it up inside there to about whatever the diameter of your shaft is and this is a little section of a trolling motor shaft which is one and one eighth inches in diameter so if you pop it in there you kinda get an idea what you need to do then this is the modified bracket I'm going to be using that sets inside here to hold this in place so once I get my shaft drilled out I'll go ahead and mark which one of these teeth and there's going to be two because these are 180 degrees apart that I'm going to either shave down or snap out so this bracket will drop down inside there and then it'll pinch to the shaft and then when the motor rotates the motor itself will turn Okay, so I opened up the hole for the shaft using a 1 and 1 8 inch hole saw. And once I did that, it was a little snug, so I just shaved down a little bit of the inside just so the shaft would turn more freely. And it worked out great. I snapped off the two teeth there and slid the unit in there, and everything fits. Tightened it up and put some power to it and it's fun so on with the next part I want to show you how I installed the L brackets here on the NK180 trolling motor mount as you can see there they come in here and they go behind the gearbox here which helps keep it from rotating because of the torque it puts out and here's the other one there and they're just screwed in there and they work just fine this is a view of the electronics mounted inside the project box here you can see the two ESC's and they're attached to the box using VHB tape and each of these are the sets that go to the motor as you can see and I explained earlier and I'm going to use the left one for the trolling motor which means I'm going to double up both these contacts using the Y connectors that I talked about earlier now I'm going to use the right side ESC for the gearbox motor and I tested that on the bench and that draws less than 3 amps so I'm only going to use one set of those connectors because I'm not going to get anywhere near the maximum amp draw on that ESC. So I also doubled up both the positives for the ESC and both the negatives and they're running out through that gland there and they'll connect to your power source and then I also have the receiver attached up here using VHB tape and each of the ESCs has its own on off switch that I mounted there as well. And these are the connections for each ESC that are going to go into the appropriate spots in the receiver. This is the completed control box and I have it temporarily set up for this test. And if you go down here you can see I have the left side with the motor label, the right with the gearbox label. Up on top I have a shameless plug along with each on off switch is labeled then I added the vented side holes on either side there with the fiberglass screen repair tape and I'll include a link of that in the narrative section coming out a little bit further you can see the test setup and that's what I'm gonna run right now I've connected the power to the box and for the test setup 
I have my remote already powered on, so I'm going to power up each of the ESCs. You'll hear the beeps, and then I'll do the tests. First, I'll test the throttle. Now, I'll test the gearbox steering. And as I did with the thrusters in another project, you can still throttle up and steer at the same time. So that's it. Everything works like it should. So that's it. If you have any questions, please leave them for me in the comments. Thank you.